Hello everybody. Today I want to talk a little bit about our asparagus. We've got these old roots, crowns. So uh, these crowns, as I said, we picked quite a little bit of asparagus uh, from this because it's a whole row in here. So let me show you how much we picked. We picked this one today. And um, because it's, we left it for a few more days, it's quite big, but it's really nice, organic. We didn't use any chemicals on it. Um, I've got some parsley there and I do not want to pull it out, but I need to cover them roots with compost, if you see, and uh, the production will be better once it's everything is under the compost so today I'm going to do that just cover it up like this so next time when I'm picking it can be cut underneath the compost so this is my young asparagus that been sown from seeds it's interesting to say the least how it will perform we are going to plant in the ground when it's established a little bit more in these pots so uh, we will see later on i'm gonna keep updating you with um, how this asparagus is doing it's not looking bad though but it's very very thin we didn't grow before from seeds only from roots I'm going to show you a little bit as well just a small tool in the glass house there Sorry. the tomato plants are almost all of them in the bags now we've got the bees came today because uh, some of the tomato plants are in flower and they need pollinating now so we ordered our bees they came today i'm gonna put them out in a few minutes i'll show you good and afternoon uh, we get the bees sometime collecting from the depot or they come in the post here is the box that they would come in that's just an empty box to give it a little stability in the packaging and there's the bees they make a lot of noise they will go outside from the box inside is about 300 babies called a cone there's about 50 or 60 adults which have hatched out they will collect the nearest pollen source in this case will be the tomato flowers and that pollen is to feed the baby bees in the cones to help them grow and then flourish there's no queen in the box so after about three months 10 to 12 weeks the box dies out the life cycle of it is finished that's why we bring in more boxes on tomatoes and we bring them on different crops so just need to check that we've got this all correct if you lift it out you'll see in the bottom of the box there is glucose sugar solution because from a tomato flower is only pollen not nectar and pollen raspberries have pollen and nectar and so the bees get their energy from collecting the pollen but from tomatoes there is only pollen so they have the substitute of a glucose and sugar solution in the bottom of the hive so close it up we place the hive at the end of the row facing south and so what I'm going to do is uh, use the dummy box 
us a plinth so that we can keep it off the ground so that if any ants or any predators come along they only have the dummy box like that and we stack them on top of each other I will not open both boxes tonight because one box is to go into the raspberries one box will be here for the tomatoes so I'll open the tomato box up and as you see there's three holes here in the plastic uh, slide if we only want the bees just to go in we just lift it so there's one door that means they can go in but they can't come out there's a tube inside the box there that only allows them to go in and if we want them to come in and out then we lift it up like that and then they'll come out so you can see that the box has been opened if you have the boxes come in very late at night then you should only open them up two hours before the sun sets because when the bees come out of the box they fly and they orientate themselves within the glass house that's all in aid so they could find the hive, the box, when they do the pollination they will be able to come back to give the pollen to the youngsters. In the winter a study was undertaken for the bees they would do 400 flowers on one trip they would pollinate 400 tomato flowers on one trip putting the pollen on their back legs which we'll show you later and they ascertained that one bee could do 10 trips a day that's 4,000 flowers they would pollinate in a day in the winter you think about that that's being a busy bee isn't it here comes one So he's just getting his orientation about what's here, what's about, markers so he can find the box and he starts to fly a little further away from the box and then comes back and so as you can see he's getting his bearings. I say he but it's actual fact a she because all the bees in the box are females, they're not males. attracted on two simple things one is with perfume very strong perfume will excite and make them sting you and the other is that you are wearing ultraviolet which is yellow or blue apart from that they're quite innocuous they do their work they go about their business and you don't even know they're even existing in the glass house sometimes you'll look for them there's bite marks on the flowers again I'll show you that later when they start to get underway that shows that the bee has bitten the center of the flower to shake the pollen out he has his front teeth and he locks onto the center of the flower and shakes the pollen out that's what we call a bite mark and um, the more bite marks there are the better the pollination is that's why as the flowers uh, grow on the plants we look for how many bite marks according to how many bees are about yeah just starting to come out now quite, uh, Ooh, all the time. I think we ought to distinguish it from video. so one of the methods that we use and we have is trapping for bugs that yellow sticky trap is sticky on both sides and because the uh, insects are attracted to ultraviolet that's why it's either yellow or blue we can look for thrips we can look for uh, many many different things if we have a problem this will alert us before they actually land onto the crop so on this one if I'm looking here we've got just one or two little fruit flies these are these are nearly nothing these are just uh, a nuisance more than anything have a look on this one 
and we'll see what we've got on this one. Ah, look, you can see we've got something a little different now. This is here, one here, there's one here. This is a vine weevil. And if you remember, we were doing uh, nemesis with nematodes in the uh, pots for the raspberries, then them little white grubs, that's what they would hatch out into is in the vine weevil. They would in turn eat the leaf of the plant and then relay their eggs in more compost, hence the reason for the grow bags. So this is what we can see that we have then. Uh, all the raspberry pots were done with Nemesis and that's very good because we were right to do that. Otherwise we would have had quite an outbreak of uh, vine weevil, which would have been detrimental to all the crops that we would have grown here, whether it's the fig trees, the cherry trees, the raspberries, the strawberries, the tomatoes, they can decimate the leaves and take all the green away, greenery away from the plants and that's just giving the plant a, a, another problem to uh, grow and survive. But we trap them, we can see what uh, is about, there's a lowish level uh, because we've used the nemesis. So in here is near enough a sterile bug free zone. This is just giving us an indicator of what is. Okay, we've found a bumblebee on a tomato plant. And if you see, he's got a brown bottom, not a white bottom, which shows he is native to England. He's a native English bumblebee and he has a little bit of pollen on his back legs as you can see not much but just a little bit and he's probably exhausted we use bumblebees because many reasons one they fly in very low light although it's a nice sunny day today compared to honeybees two they uh, fly at a lower temperature, a bumblebee will fly down to 6 degrees, where a honeybee will fly uh, not below 12, 11, 12 degrees. But most importantly, a bumblebee doesn't communicate. He's an individual. They come out of their hive, wherever they are uh, located, and their sole function and their sole purpose in life is to pollinate the flower to get the pollen from the flower to go and feed its young. If you have a honeybee, a honeybee will communicate and say there's pollen over there and that's okay guys but there's lovely amber nectar over the other side of the fence and they all fly over the other side of the fence because their friends and everything else has turned around and said so. So that's why we don't use honeybees in the glass house at this situation. It's all bumblebees. So explaining it today but that's all bye for now